Hello and welcome to episode 4 for our Let's Play of The Lord of the Rings. In the last episode, we uh, just entered the gate to the Old Forest. So our next task will be to navigate through the maze and uh, come out on the other side to continue our quest. Now, if you remember the books we read in Brandy Hall's library, uh, they mentioned that the way to get through the maze was to find the ruins in the northwest corner and then uh, head to the east and the south. And um, like I mentioned in that video, there's actually a much, much simpler way to uh, get through the maze. The first thing you'll want to do is follow the path to the south. And pretty soon you'll come to an area uh, right here where you won't be able to go south any further. So then you want to head to the east. And there's actually no uh, like paths you can go off to the side or anything on this route. It's pretty much just uh, one way. And you'll come to this dead end here. And you'll want to approach this tree here on the bottom. On a tall tree branch, a brown bird is crying piteously. It seems to have been tied to the branch by some cruel creature, and it cannot escape. Well, we can uh, just use our climb skill. This was not an easy climb, but you manage it, nearly plummeting to the ground as you unravel the snare. The bird jubilantly flies into the air, dives through a previously unseen hole excuse me, hole in the east hedge wall, then vanishes from sight. And uh, we can actually use that shortcut as well by just uh, walking towards the hedge. After many hours of travel through this miserable forest, your vision becomes a dark green blur. Your footsteps stagger as you lurch be as, as, sorry, as you lurch between sleep and consciousness. It is as though some other force were controlling your movements. Um, what that's done is uh, taken us to another spot on the edge of the forest. So if you just head east, you'll find this enormous tree here. Lifting your heavy eyes, you find that you are under a hoary old willow tree, its enormous branches going up like reaching arms with many fingered hands. You hear the voices of your friends from within the tree. Help, help, help. Do you wish to attack the tree? Uh, I usually pick no. I think the tree will do a couple of points of damage to whoever is trapped inside it. Uh, if you do end up attacking it, it just pisses the tree off. And there's actually two ways you can get your friends out. Um, you can use your help word of power here. But you can uh, save it if you just uh, use your perception skill. You find an opening within the trunk of Old Man Willow, leading into darkness. Do you wish to enter it? Yes, we do. You follow the opening into darkness. The cavern is gloomy and wet. A nearby underground stream, perhaps? A small hole in the ceiling provides poor illumination, but you think you see the glint of something bright in the floor of the cave. And by using perception, uh, it's given us the option to explore this cave. If we'd used help, uh, we wouldn't have had that. There's something half buried beneath your feet. And before I pick all those things up, I'm going to use um, Pippin's uh, sneak skill. And then you can safely pick up the items. Um, if you don't use your sneak skill, the tree will uh, seal the exit and start flooding. Since we did sneak, we can just walk right out there. Um, but if that does happen, if the tree uh, seals the exit on you, it'll start to flood. Um, but all you need to do is use your perception again, and you can find a hole in the ceiling, uh, and then you can just climb out. So after you get out of the tree, follow the uh, river bank to the east, and then to the north, uh, once you get to that bridge, we'll come back to that in a minute, you're looking for this area here where there's this big uh, brown dirt patch, Then you want to head to the uh, west once you get there, and uh, we're looking for this hill right here. The entrance into this barrow has been sealed with a huge stone slab. None of your best efforts suffice to move it. Well, there's actually uh, no way to get in there, but uh, we can come to the top of the hill here and uh, use Sam's shovel. You find something that you can use. We have a bottle and a gem and uh, some pennies. So you'll want to take all those things. Then uh, go back to the uh, riverbank and... Uh, follow it back to the bridge that we ignored on the way up there. There it is. And uh, on this side of the river, you'll notice that uh, we have a house here. And uh, first we'll want to go to the garden and see what we can find there. You find something that you can use. You have a lot of uh, foodstuffs here. Uh, red beans and dwarf ore will just heal your health. Uh, Athelus also heals your health. But uh, the character using it will need to have um, Herblore as one of their skills. Or uh, there are healers you can 
give the athletes to and they can uh, use them. This house seems peaceful and free from evil. Though simply furnished after your perils, it is more welcome than the house of a king. We can get some more uh, food by going into the kitchen here. Some hot food, actually. Then we'll talk to this fellow, see whose house it is. You settle down to converse with Bombadil. Tom explains that he is the eldest. He existed before the trees, the rain, the elves, and even the Dark Lord. He then asks to handle the ring. Do you let him? Well, I'd usually say it's a bad idea to uh, be handing the ring around to people we've just met, but uh, I'm going to say yes in this uh, situation. Tom puts it on his finger and smiles. You gasp. He didn't disappear. Tom laughs, spins the ring in the air, and then vanishes. Then he smiles and hands it back to the ring bearer. And by doing that, everyone in our party, uh, except the pony, has picked up the Bombadil word of power. I guess since the pony can't talk. You are quite tired from the day's ordeal. Do you wish to sleep? Yes, we do. The ring bearer has a dream. He sees a small brown bird wing its way to a great eagle's eyrie. Amid thunder clashes, the eagle flies into a great tower with a circle, sweeping down and bearing away a white-haired man. Say Angmar to the stone apart, he cries. We've done two things by uh, choosing to sleep there. Um, everyone in our party has uh, gotten their full health back, and whoever your ring bearer is will pick up the Angmar word of power. Let's see what we have here. Tom's wife, the beautiful Goldberry, is here. She is lying in bed, ill. Beside her, a blackened willow leaf floats in a bowl of stinking water. My lilies, she whispers. My special pool lies south of this house. Please, bring me lilies. Take this token and whatever you may need from this house. She offers you her token, a gold leaf pasted against oak bark. So we'll want to grab that. Doesn't sound like that's too hard of a task. Uh, Tom's gone somewhere, I guess. Uh... What was I saying? Oh yeah, it doesn't sound too tough uh, getting lilies, so this must be the pool she was talking about, so let's use our perception and see if we can find any. You are too late. An early frost has killed the lilies here. Well, we're going to have to go back to Goldberry with that unfortunate news uh, and see what she has to say. Please help me. There might be lilies in a river south of my pool. Search there. Well, I guess we'll... Uh, find that river just to the south here it is behind this shimmering curtain of falling water a tunnel leads into darkness well, looks like we have a secret cave here and actually uh, the library in Brandy Hall uh, talked about something hidden behind the waterfall so I guess this is what it was referring to there's something here you might use and uh, we have a sword I'm gonna go ahead and equip it to Frodo and uh, I guess it's something more like a dagger because uh, the hobbits can't usually equip full-size swords. Maybe it's uh, something like uh, Sting, our Uncle Bilbo's uh, famous sword that he found. And here we have what looks like a wall of ice, so uh, I'm going to uh, try and use the torch to get through it. The wall of ice is not even warm. Nothing has melted. There may be a way to get through this wall, but fire isn't going to do it. Well, it looks like we're dealing with a magical wall here. So maybe we have a spell or something that we can use to get through it. We can use Athelwyn's counter magic. The gap in the ice wall seals itself as you pass through it. Uh, this is actually one of the bugs you'll find in the game. Uh, as soon as you counter magic and uh, it puts you on the right side here, it will immediately send you back to the left. But the simple fix for that is to uh, just have the right direction button pressed down as you counter magic. And you'll start walking to the right and uh, you can investigate the side of the wall. Well, it looks like there's nothing here, but once again we'll use perception on the south wall. Embedded in the wall is a staff of ice, waiting for someone to take it. And that someone will be us. Then you just pass through it by walking towards the ice wall there. Upon the throne is a being that resembles a human sculpture made out of mud from a mighty riverbank. This is the mighty Withy Windle, the spirit of the river. She says in a slow, deep voice, I know of you and your quest. Yet who bids you to take lilies from my secret place? Show me a token so I may understand. Well, we can just trade her gold's token, and hopefully that will be sufficient to explain. Alas, the old river spirit cries as great muddy tears roll down her cheeks. I may not honor your request. Magic deeper than my silty bed forbids it, till spring again touches my banks. 
Yet there is a way. Go west to Rudy Oak. Take to him a red acorn, and ask for the spring stone. And just one more uh, plant thing we have to look for, I guess. And Rudy Oak was uh, mentioned again in one of the books we read in Brandy Hall's library. And you want to approach this tree here. You think that this is a queer place to find a red oak tree. Uh, now, there's actually a problem with the enhanced version. Uh, I think the standard version is fine with this. But as soon as it displays that uh, text about the oak tree, uh, the option to get red acorns, there should be red acorns here, but the option to get them uh, is no longer there. So you actually can't get the acorns in the enhanced version. But that's okay because uh, we only need them to make Rudy Oak join our party. That's what he would do if you traded in the acorns. And uh, we actually don't need him to. And here we have uh, an attack, it looks like. I think that's the black alder that uh, we also read about in the book there. I'm going to just uh, run away from him. You just want to move all your characters to the edge of the screen. Because he can, like we saw there with Druin, he can deal some damage. So yeah, to escape a battle, just move everyone to the edge of the screen. But uh, there's one thing you need to take note of. Uh, characters with five points of health or lower will um, be knocked unconscious. And if you abandon a battle and leave an unconscious member behind, they will die. And here we have the Rudy Oak. He must be the good guy, so we'll talk to him. Greetings, rootless ones. Unless you be as swift as a stream, this is not a safe place for one such as you. And we'll just ask him about the spring stone. If I could spell it properly. What you seek lies to the south. Search for it on the top of the hill. I will not stop you. Yeah, see, if we had given him the red acorns, he would have just joined us. Um, but you can't even take him across the river or really anywhere except this hill. So it doesn't do you much good. The entrance into this barrow has been sealed with a huge stone slab. None of your best efforts suffice to move it. And we can't get in this barrow either. But like the first one we saw, you'll just want to use your uh, shovel on the top here. And you'll find a spring stone. And real quickly, I'm going to uh, give Druin some food or something since he took a big uh, chunk of damage from the black alder in our battle there and like I mentioned before uh, you can't just give him several servings of rations you can only use uh, one in any given day otherwise uh, you won't get the healing effect but anyways, now that we have the spring stone, you'll want to go back to Withy Windle and uh, just trade it to her. And hopefully that will give us the lilies that we were looking for. It is foolish to petition me more than once without good cause, Withy Windle declares. Well, we do have a good cause. We found that stone you wanted, so just trade it to her. The word of Withy Windle shall always be honored. Take and give with my blessing. And we finally have the lilies. So we'll just uh, go back to Goldberry and hopefully the lilies uh, can cure whatever is um, ailing her. I've got that Ebola outbreak going on, so that might have something to do with it. All right. Then you'll just want to uh, trade. The lilies. You have my gratitude, Goldberry says as she presses the flower against her face, and you will find that this quest has left you better prepared for the great task ahead. We don't get any uh, items or weapons or anything like that, but um, if you look at your stats, every uh, character has gotten a bit of a stat boost. And with that, uh, I think I'm going to draw this episode to a close right here. In the next episode, we're going to be a uh, investigating the barrow down so finding some treasure finding some ghosts so um yeah i hope you'll uh, join me for uh video five